Hello there and welcome to part 4 of the tutorial series on fundamental analysis using financial statements. What we've done so far is we've created a function that's getting the financial statements from Yahoo Finance, one that's calculating a profitability score based on Piotrowski's F-score and now we're going to continue with the leverage liquidity and source of funds section that of course is the second the next one on the list um, before moving to operating efficiency. Now, if we take a look at the description provided by Piotrowski, um, he has three scores created for this section. The first one being the change in leverage or the long-term ratio. So he thinks that um, reducing the long-term debt is something that a company should strive towards or increase its strength, but it's not necessarily, in my opinion, a good um, measure. So there are often a lot of uh, companies that increase their debt ratio, but it's, if it's done for the right reasons, I don't think that it should. a company should have a, a score for decreasing because it, it can be interpreted in both ways. So I personally don't agree with this uh, ratio. Instead, what I'm going to use is I would think of what is the total exposure to long-term debt. So what is the long-term ratio itself? If it's greater than a certain percentage, that means that a company is more risky because it has these payments, for example, interest payment that need to be done on time. And well, it doesn't matter if you're profitable or not, those are payments that you need to do. So the first ratio that I'm going to create myself is the debt ratio and the score will be based on um, whether the long-term ratio, debt ratio is above or below a certain percentage. So down here, I'm going to create a leverage function. So this is the one that we're going to run with the brackets in the correct order. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a score such as the one that we had in for profitability. We're going to call it leverage score. We'll set it to zero and we're going to change it based on these scores that we create. So global leverage score, because we want to modify that variable that's outside of the function within the function. So we need to get the long-term debt. And here I'm going to select one unit so we can get the data and we can access the balance sheet to see how what is the correct um, naming convention. So print balance sheet. And what we're looking for is long-term debt. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to store it here as, maybe first let's add score number six, long-term debt ratio. So um, long-term or LT debt would be equal to balance sheet. Then we're going to access years. Then we're going to access the most recent year. And then we have the description long-term debt. What's special about this part is that in theory, a company can have no long-term debt. And if you're searching for something in a financial statement that doesn't exist, you are going to run into an error. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a try function and accept. So we're going to try to get this. And if it works, there are going to be a specific actions taken. If it doesn't work, well, that's great because the company doesn't have long-term debt and let's give some credit to that. So regarding the first, um, let's say score by Piotrowski. I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to create one on my own that checks if long-term debt is greater or below, let's say 40% of the total assets. Now the total assets, that's something that we already have. So we can copy this and then we're going to create debt ratio, which would be equal to long-term debt divided by total assets. Now here we can have um, say debt, debt ratio, debt ratio score, which would be equal to one if this debt ratio that we've calculated is below, let's say point, point 0.4. So if the if if less than forty percent um, of the company is funded by long-term debt, we can say that it's strong. It has uh, strong financial positions. Otherwise, it would be zero. So else zero. But in case this doesn't work, so for, for example, it, there is no long-term debt, then 
except what we will do is well we are going to set this depth ratio score to be equal to one because the company doesn't have any long-term debt so we're going to grant this score of one i think this is a, a better approach than than this one but there are pros and cons of each so it's up to you to choose the one that works best for you then we have change in current ratio so this is again one that i don't fully agree because the change in current ratio it's not necessarily it can be good and bad but um and it's it's very it, it varies based on the industry so for some industries it's normal to have a, a high current uh, ratio for others it's it's not as normal um, so I'm not sure if this one's adding a lot of value. Of course, one thing that has to be the case is that the current, uh, at least it's advisable that the current ratio is greater than one. So it's current, the current assets of a company are sufficient to cover the current liabilities. And if that's not the case, then that the company might have some issues. So maybe that is one um, simple score that we can calculate, but the change year over year, it's not necessarily best ratio but it's that's what at least Piotrowski thinks so um, of course we are uh, we have the freedom to agree or disagree so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create current ratio um, and for that what we need is the current assets and the current liabilities at the moment we would have them or we can just make it a bit shorter so current assets liabilities current ratio would be equal to current assets divided by current liabilities and then our current ratio score would be equal to one if the current ratio is greater than one else zero so if the company has sufficient current assets to cover the current liabilities so le less than uh, one year then we would give that company score of one now we, of course we need to figure out this part here which is how do we get the current assets? How do we get the current liabilities? So what we're going to do is run the same um, script, print balance sheet, and let's take a look at what we're looking for. If maybe we have total current assets, which should be the case. So here we have the total current assets. I'm going to copy this here and total current liabilities. This zero we don't need. Now we need to replace that with accessing the balance sheet to get that specific um, account. And of course, the approach that we're using is the same one throughout the entire uh, series. So balance sheet, the most recent year, total assets, or in this case, total liabilities. And now we can calculate the current ratio or the, and the current ratio score and it would be one or zero. The last one is change in the number of shares. Um, it's also a different point of view. You can, you can scrape the number of shares the company had before, you can focus on that, or you can take the cash flow statement and take a look at, hmm, maybe we can take the repurchase of stock included in that one. and the issuance of stock. So if we take these two, so how the number of stock issued and the repurchase, those two should provide us with the net movement of, of stock. I'm not sure if there's anything that's already netting that. I don't see at least. So we can take these two together, but as you can see, this one can also be not a number. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't think that this adds a lot of value, but if you think it does, then you can always do a try and accept for for the two. Um, because issuing stock, is, issuing new shares doesn't, in my opinion, is not a bad signal or, or a good signal. It, it, it can be, it can go both ways. So I'm going to skip this one for now, just because I don't think it adds value. But if you want to if you want to include it then i would personally suggest you to go with the issuance of stock from the cash flow statement and the um what was it repurchase of stock this is the cash movement but i think that's also it might be even more relevant than or you can also of course compare the the beginning balance of the number of shares and the ending balance but then you need to figure out what would what should the 
the price that you take into account be because of course um, you can it varies over time so otherwise the last thing is you can take a look at the balance sheet and you can focus on let me see where the equity part is structure is not very good at well initially so what you're probably looking for is the common stock so the change year over year and i'm assuming that there is some for the maybe the other shareholders equity so this could be it but yeah just take a look at the numbers and see what works for you for me i'll just stick with these two i think this is um, a nice score that involves the long-term debt as well as the, the short-term uh, position of the company so for me the leverage score would be equal to the debt ratio score plus the current ratio score so in this case it would be zero up to two now i can uncomment this part out so i want leverage to to run and maybe we can print leverage score just to make sure that it works or maybe it doesn't but basically just as a short recap what we've done is we have the long-term debt and the total assets and if that works it means that the company has long-term debt and total assets and therefore it can calculate a debt ratio and therefore assign a score of zero or one if that doesn't work for some reason which the only uh, reason, in my opinion, is that the company doesn't have long-term debt is then we would like to assign a score of one immediately. Then for the current ratio, current assets are being compared to the current liabilities. If that is greater than one, we give a score of one. So what I want to do is I'm going to run this. Um, at the moment, we have it for one. Let's, let's make another random selection of 60 to 65. Maybe we run into some uh, issue, maybe not. Let's see. Oh, that's actually a very good, very good example. So, so we have five companies. The first one, something went wrong, and the issue for that is, of course, because this is a B class. It's not a, it's it's not a ordinary share. So in this case, of course, we cannot access the balance sheet because it's not really the, the first share in line. Then for the next company, we have a score of five for profitability, two for liquidity. Four for profitability, two for liquidity, one, one, five, two. So it looks as as this part is working quite well. So we can, based on um, what we've done so far, we can access and calculate the profitability and leverage score for the companies. And I think that would be that should be sufficient for this tutorial. For the last one, we're going to, of course, focus on operating efficiency, create a function just like this one. Uh, if you want, you can try to create one yourself before watching the next video and then compare and see how far you get. But make sure to question what you're doing and don't just follow what Piotrowski's uh, approach is. Don't, don't follow his approach because if we all do, then what's the point of, of that? We'll all get the same result and that's not... that's not the best way of uh, thinking when it comes to, to analyzing and investing. So think of, think outside of the box, create your own ratios, but make sure that you have some logic behind it. Um, so that would be all regarding this one and I'll see you in the next one.